Today in Agronomy on KFIL AM 1060 with Pioneer Field Agronomist Allie Wise and Josh Schaffner. Here's Josh and Allie. Good morning, Southeast Minnesota. It's September 1st, 2021, and this is episode 80, Allie. Um, yeah, so we turned the calendar into September, and uh, obviously to me, that's always the time that we really start to think about harvest and um, obviously some really big rainfall tallies uh, across the area. Allie, that's probably the big story. Uh, since our last episode. And uh, we'll also talk a little bit today around, you know, some of our crop tour. But, um, you know, Allie, we had quite a divide east-west. We talk about it all the time, but uh, you had some big rainfall tallies out there uh, in the west near neck of the woods. Yeah. So as you get down by Lyle, Minnesota, for me, that was actually the largest area of accumulation. In that area total, they were sitting close, not quite 10 inches, um, but on average, some areas received probably more than 10, some less. So, you know, certainly I think keep that in mind. In a lot of cases, that rain maybe came just a touch too too late for some of those dry pockets, pockets. but in so many ways, you know, that still added, uh, contributed tremendously to to yield would be my take. Um, not only West, but I think East Josh too, in terms of the importance of that rain, I think you'd agree, you know, a little bit late, but yet very important in, in helping things along in a tremendous way. Yeah, and it seemed like four inches kind of covered um, kind of the the eastern part of the, the territory as we got closer to, you know, to Preston, to Harmony, to, to Rushford, and, and over to the Mississippi. Uh, it seemed like that was kind of the tally. And yeah, I mean, it kind of really, um, where we've had a little better moisture, it really ensured that we're going to, you know, probably not have rainfall, you know, be a, a huge contributing factor to the yield. Uh, this will finish the crop out really well. Um, you know, I think probably... Allie, if we look at, you know, way more positives to the rain than negative, like you did say, I think the one thing is there was some some parts of farms that the rain came too late. And you're also going to probably see that this week that you're really going to see the crop start to ripen. I think we're going to see, you know, probably some of the tops of the corn really start to show that, you know, kind of that that yellowing in it. I think you're going to see the soybean crop slowly start to turn, especially if we got some early maturity beans. Um, you know, you, you, we can already start to see that as well. Um, but I really think the one thing. Um, yeah, that unfortunately just for some areas too late. And now I think you're really going to see the crop, um, you know, start to ripen. I think in some ways the plant was masking, Ali, some of the the stress behind it. Um, where now I think that it got rain. I think you're going to see maybe some plants try to fire, but realize that it, it's too late. Maturity is too far. And you're just going to see it really kind of race to ripening. But uh, yeah, either way, good to get rain. It's uh, interesting how I go from one extreme to the other. Um but sometimes that's just the way it goes. The one thing nice, if you're going to get these kind of rainfall tallies, Ellie, I'd much rather get it now than early in the season from a yield standpoint. Yep. And I think, you know, this kind of leads us into, if we're talking a normal situation, you know, from a 420, say, planning date, we've accumulated roughly, you know, 23, 28 GDUs. Um, so obviously significantly above normal. In your opinion, you know, for an average, say, 100-day product, when could we potentially be looking at black layer, assuming that, you know, temperature isn't going to completely drop off on us this time of the year? Yeah, like, like you mentioned, we're sitting at 2,328 uh, at an April uh, 20th, 21st planning date there, which that, that's great, just is relative, you know, that's about 223 ahead of the average. And again, we keep reminding, we're pairing that with really early planning dates, which is actually probably making us feel like we're all of, you know, 10, 12, 14 days ahead of where we should be. Um, but, you know, if we just stay even seasonable, the 15 day forecast looks respectable, Allie, but, you know, we that should kind of trigger us to kind of cross that black layer line with a lot of hybrids, um, kind of the middle of September. I think there's a lot of stuff on the early side that you're going to see really knocking on the door here um, in a week's time. And I, I think, you know, between that 15th and 25th, we're going to have potentially um a lot of hybrids really reach reach maturity. And in some cases, I've had some pictures sent to some early planted 105 day that's already half milk line. And um, it seems like it went from no milk line to half milk line in about 10 days. And if we can uh, stay nice here, um, I think it'll it'll be here before we know it. But um, in corn silage jelly, I think we'll see that fire up here very soon. Yeah, I think, you know, potentially for some, depending on what area you're in, some might start start on that at the end of this week and, and others maybe as we progress into next week. But I think the biggest thing, even though we do have moisture, you know, back in the pro profile, which is going to slow us back a little bit from when we maybe thought we'd start some corn silage, still be conscious of that milk line and moisture of those plants. Cause sometimes visual observations can be a little bit different than what the actual moisture of that plant is. I, I mean, is that a fair statement, Josh? Oh yeah. I, I think Kevin soil moisture, it's going to, 
it's going to help us manage the moisture through harvest dramatically. I, I was really nervous if we would have came into into September first as as dry as we were, <clears throat> and if we would have had some some decent temperature and sun, I think the moisture management would have been a challenge. I think now if we dry up and we get going, I think it'll definitely give us a wider harvest w- window. Um, you know, with that said, I mean, the, the plants are going to continue to mature and uh, it's still August. So our days are long and, and the sun's still pretty high. Um, oh, it's September 1st now. But, you know, we, with long days, I, I still think we're going to progress it pretty rapidly. And uh, but thankfully, we got the moisture just uh, I think it's going to give us at least uh, uh, an extra four or five day window. What we were going to be dealing with if we had to stay dry and, and didn't get those rains last week. Yep, absolutely. So in segment two, I mean, stick with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about maybe the soybean crop, what we're seeing there, especially from a disease perspective. I think on corn, now that we do have moisture back um, in a lot of these fields um, and knowing that we maybe have some cooler or more mild temperatures coming, I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for tar spot. I'm sure you will too, Josh. I think we're late enough. It won't be a yield limiting thing, but in terms of things to keep an eye on in corn, that's certainly something I have top of mind. But back from break, we'll talk about other observations from the field and shift a little bit more to what we're seeing in soybeans. Welcome back listeners. So Josh, you know, we talked a lot about the fact this rain really helping to finish the crop in in our area across Southeast Minnesota. Um, For segment two, want to talk just about some few observations in soybeans and why why we might be seeing what we're seeing, and then wrap up with our observations from the crop tour we had a couple weeks ago, paired with the pro farmer tour across the Midwest. But for starters, Josh, I think on the soybean side of things, obviously we know the the rain helped those plants contribute just to keeping the, the number of beans per pod, and I think kept us from having some really small beans in some cases. So hopefully bean size will be Um, tremendously affected in a good way from that rain. Um, But have been having a lot of conversations about disease between a little bit of white mold, but maybe more predominantly SDS starting to surprise us here down this, down this stretch, especially in your area. Yeah. And I think, um, I think the whole story of soybeans um, between now and when we wrap up harvest is going to be, you know, SDS and followed by white mold, followed by standability. I think that's going to be the the, the big talking points. I think if you look at the soybean crop from a macro level, I, I'm really excited about the yield potential of the crop, especially, you know, maybe 52 East where we've had better rain. Uh, with that said, um, we're probably seeing as much SDS in the Southeast corner alley than, than we've seen in a long time. And I attribute a lot of that back to just our, our cold spring. You know, we look back at SDS that infects that emergence and you know, cold soils is something that that can really bring that disease on. I think that's really starting to show right now. And obviously compacted areas, you know, shown as well. Um, You know, and white mold, something we deal with every year, Uh, you know, alleys, you go west, you might be maybe a little more nervous about white mold than SDS. Usually you have more SDS and and, and to the east has more white mold. This year it's it's a little bit kind of flip-flop for whatever reason. And then, um, you know, sustainability, you know, the beans to the east in June, where we had a little bit better moisture, uh, really early planting dates, you know, the beans got the canopy in a hurry and, uh, and, and just got really tall in some cases, you know, I'm tall and they're up almost up to my chin in some areas if you pull them up. And I think these heavy rains late, um, going to be good yields out there, but I, I think harvest is going to take a lot of patience uh, in some of these fields with some of these heavy rains we had down the stretch. Yeah. And did just want to bounce off your comment of, I would argue I'm seeing a little more white mold over SDS at the current state and time. We'll see what these rains bring. I know that can kind of flush those toxins through the plant. So perhaps we'll we'll see a ramp up in SDS. Um, but white mold for us, I think it had to have been just a timing of when we got some moisture back into some of our soybean fields and when they were flying, when they were flowering that that brought on the initiation of white mold. But um for now, we're keeping it at bay. We'll see how we finish the rest of this season, you know, from a disease perspective. Um, Josh, for these last minutes of today's show, did want to hop back a couple weeks. We took our own tour, kind of an I-90 crop tour from Austin on down to Mabel, Minnesota, looking at the crop. Um, I think, you know, just general observations of what we saw that day and just a recap of how that may be paired up with what they saw in Pro Farmer across the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. Um... Really fun to get out there and do some some estimates and take a look at the crop and and it, some of our, some of our listeners might have saw our Twitter video that that we put out there, Allie. And I think you and I both agree that you know the challenging thing was we, we really didn't measure variability very good. Um, sometimes when you're in plots, you know they can be in pretty good areas, and um, in some cases we thought where the crop looked good, we were probably estimating maybe a little under what the potential is out there. Um, but with that said, when you when you put it all to an average. 
you know, we really didn't measure some of the poor areas that are out there either. And I think, I think even when you do look at the macro level of a Midwest pro farmer tour, you know, the question, you know, I think anything on a year like this, when you look at, you know, the moisture stresses across the region in drought areas is, you know, it's just so hard to measure that variability of, of what is the full impact. And in some cases, you know, we'll have to see, um, you know, when, when the combines roll, what it truly is. But uh, with that said, I'm really excited about some, some fields we walked. I think there's going to be some great yields. There's going to be some challenges, but um, you know, overall, I, I think for how dry we've been in some areas, the crop hung in there are extremely good. I, I think it's just a testament to good management and in modern hybrids and, and good weed control and in crop nutrition. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting. It's just, just uh, it, my, my hardest thing about this crop is just really getting a gauge of, of just how, how poor some areas might be and how do we equate that into the, the into the, the, the bigger number is the, the challenge of this crop. Yeah. And you think about as we came into that week, we had still been kind of stringing that crop along, but when we came, came into that week of pro farmer and our tour, that's when we really started to separate this crop, especially from an East West perspective across our territory. Um, you know, you and I have talked a lot about the East West divide in terms of moisture we talk a lot about as you get west of Highway 63 is actually maybe where we would put the dividing line. Mm -hmm. And I just think west, we knew we weren't, like you said, we weren't measuring the variability, but we were very aware that that week our pockets of moisture stress were getting larger and larger. And we just were losing out on some of that yield potential in some cases. But certainly back to your point of, you know, productivity of soils was still surprisingly holding in areas of of lower rainfall in much better than one would have thought. So there's still mm -hmm. those areas of great potential, even to the West, not to say there's not, I just think we have more pockets of variability um, that we'll keep an eye on as we, as we finish this crop. Any final comments or things you're looking at um, as we move into this week, Josh? Oh, uh, no, it's September's here. And uh, yeah, it, um, the nights are getting cooler and the days are going to get short in a hurry and uh, always exciting time of year as, as we, we watch the crop uh, come to maturity and, uh, Hopefully the, the heavy rains and, and some of the storms are behind us. I know we had a few challenges there, but uh, hopefully we can just uh, have a great fall and look forward to kind of walk me through it week to week. And uh, with that, we'll, we'll wrap it, Allie, and we'll hope everyone tunes in next week. You've been listening to Today in Agronomy on KFIL AM 1060. If you've missed part of the show or want to hear more, check out the show page at kfilradio.com or with the 103.1 KFIL app. Stay connected with Allie and Josh on Twitter. It's at Allie G. Wise, W-I-S-E, and at Josh Schaffner to submit your questions for the show. Tune in next Wednesday for the next Today in Agronomy on KFIL AM 1060.